Uh, thank you, Administrator McCarthy, uh, for your testimony today and your appearance before this committee. Um, I have to tell you, it's frustrating to me to sit here and listen to my colleagues uh, on the other side of the aisle beating up on the, on the EPA. My colleagues and I uh, have seen firsthand how the EPA, my, not my my constituents and I, have seen firsthand how the EPA and the Clean Air Act have uh, improved air quality uh, and advanced public health in my district. Uh, nationally, the stories are just as compelling. A study by the EPA shows that by 2020, the benefits of the Clean Air Act will outweigh the costs by more than 30 to 1. The Clean Air Act has helped, to style, uh, helped improve public health uh, by cutting down cases of asthma, heart disease, and infant mortality, and by 2020, it is expected to prevent 17 million lost work days because people are healthier. Uh, 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 I believe the EPA is a driver of innovation, pushing industry to adapt new standards uh, that protect the environment and improve public health and create jobs in emerging fields. Um, Administrator McCarthy, uh, uh, could you go into more detail about how the EPA rules uh, have actually created jobs in our country and what new sectors have grown because of EPA action? Actually, thank you for asking that. It helps me to put the, the job code in a little bit more perspective. Um, I think you, you would see, as we have, as we have done a considerable amount of analysis, as we do with every rule, about every significant rule looking at job implications, we have been able to make these considerable pollution reductions at the same time as we have been able to continue to grow the economy here in the U.S. We are looking at actually a pollution control technology industry that now tops around $2 billion annually. We are leaders internationally in those issues. It is because we have been moving at a concerted pace to get better and better at how we reduce pollution, and we are doing it in a way that is affordable and that is extremely beneficial to the public health. We are talking about saving millions of lives. We are talking about really improving the health of our most vulnerable populations, our children and our elderly. Um, and we are talking about growing jobs, not taking them away. And we can provide you with significant more detail, uh, Congressman, but I appreciate your asking the question because EPA is about public health, but we do it always conscious of how we can reduce imp economic impacts and actually build the economy at the same time. Um, Madam Administrator, I just want to clarify something. My colleague, uh, Mr. Rohrbacher, cited a CRS report which indicated uh, an inherent conflict of interest uh, found among me members, uh, academic members of its advisory committees. However, this report, which I have right here, uh, made no such conclusion. Rather, it noted that uh, these grants are actually to academic institutions yeah. where the member is employed, yeah. um, and uh, not the member, and only a very small proportion of any of the grant may be paid in the form of salary to a member. That's my, is that your understanding as well? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, Congressman, for raising that. Yes. Um, with the conclusion, Mr. Chairman, uh, with well, the discussion of the uh, committee's subpoena regarding the Harvard and American Cancer Society studies, I would like to enter into the record letters that the Chairman received on October 30th from Harvard, uh, Brigham Young University, the ACS, and the uh, American Cancer Society, and the Health Effects Institute. These letters highlight the serious legal, ethical, and policy concerns regarding the release of individual health information. Okay. Uh, without objection, those letters will be made a part of the record, but just for clarification, those letters were actually addressed to the EPA, not to me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 Madam Administrator, uh, if I understand these science advisory uh, committees, uh, the, the industry is, uh, in, your, in your opinion, is industry adequately represented um, on these committees for, uh, for a full balance of, uh, of uh, views? Uh, uh, we, uh, the members on these panels don't represent specific sectors. They do represent expertise and knowledge and experience. And from, from my experience in working with these panels is that folks who have worked in the industry usually provide a perspective that is necessary on these panels. So it is a broad and balanced panel when we pull them together. That is required under law, and we even go above and beyond to ensure that that is the case. So uh, in your view, there is no such closed loop, um, that these are open-minded panels that uh, are not 
uh, contained by a particular ideology. In fact, that is exactly what we are required to do under the law, and I think we do a very good job at ensuring that it, that it is not at all closed. It is very open. We just look for good expertise so we can get the best science. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My time is expired. Thank